Now we get to the final component we need to consider in the circuit, the relay. We learned a little bit about the relay in part one. The relay is activated by applying a current to these two leads. However, however there's a few considerations we have to make before we connect this to the circuit. The coil to activate this relay requires more current than the AVR output pin can produce. So a transistor will be used. The transistor will be used like a switch as well. This will allow a higher current source to activate the relay with only a very small amount of current. So this part of the circuit will be like a switch to activate another switch. Another consideration we have to think about is that when the relay is de-energized, when there is no current going to the coil for a short amount of time, a voltage spike will occur and the voltage spike can actually damage the transistor. So we will be using another diode around these two pins to capture any voltage spike because diodes only allow voltage in one direction. With this particular type of trans transistor, we have the emitter, we have the base, and we have the collector. The base is what will receive the very small current. And the large current will pass through the collector and out of the emitter. The schematic symbol for a transistor looks like this. So to the base will come our AVR output pin. When the AVR outputs a signal, a 5 volt signal, this entire line, this will be connected to ground and this will be plus, plus voltage, the higher current voltage. And this will also be in 5 volts as well, it's just a, a higher current voltage that supplies the entire circuit. We will also be using a resistor at this location as well. We don't know the resistor value yet, but we're gonna, I'm going to show you a calculation that will provide you with what level of resistance you need. So we will need a resistor here, and this goes to the AVR chip. On the collector side, which is over here, we will have the coil of the relay, which also has a resistance value. And the emitter side will just go to ground. To protect the transistor, we will add a diode around the coil of the, of the relay. I'm just going to draw this a little bit bigger relay. Knowing the voltage and the resistance of the coil, we can determine what type of transistor we need and the value of the resistance coming from the AVR chip, the output pin. All of the calculations I'm going to show you can be found at this location. I'll also have this link in the in the description. Along with uh, these, all of these formulas that I'm going to show you will also be on the Newbie Hack site on the page that references this particular project. The first formula is just the Ohm's law. We have the the load current is going to be equal to the supply voltage over the load resistance, which is the resistance of the coil or the the relay. So we know the, the voltage is 5. The relay that I'm using is, has a resistance, coil resistance of 25 ohms. This equals 0.2 amps or 200 milliamps. So at this point we know that the transistor must have a higher rating, higher amperage rating than 200 milliamps. Now we have to um, determine the, the current gain rating for the transistor. The current gain is generally stated as HFE. Here are some of the specifications in the transistors that I have. And they have a typical HFE of 200 all the way across the board. On, there's three different transistors in here. And here are the, is the IC, which is the um, load current. And the maximum ratings are 600, 200, and 600. So I probably won't be using this one, since this, will, this one will be too small 
um, it will be right on the same the exact um, current that I'll be using but I want to have some leeway in there so I'll probably be using one of these two so the formula for this the HFE has to be five times the load current divided by the maximum output output current from the from the AVR chip so the current will be, well, will be five times the 200 milliamps or 0.2 amps over the IC or the AVR pins can output 40 milliamps or 0.04 amps so 200 divided by 40 or 0.2 divided by 4 is equal to 5 over 1 or 5 so 5 times 5 is 25 so the HFE value must be at least 25 and I have 200 so I'm within range now we need to determine the resistance value coming from the pin of the AVR to the base pin of the transistor if the voltage from the AVR is the same as the the voltage source for going across the collector and emitter then we can use a simple formula of the resistance 0.2 times the load resistance which is 25 ohms times the HFE of your transistor which is minus 200 and this equals exactly 1000 ohms or 1k so we will use a 1k resistor here we know the value of or we know um, that our transistor we're going to be using is a safe transistor to use and we also and for the protection diode that we're going to have across the the coil it's going to be across these two pins here in the reverse direction and we're going to use a, a standard signal diode that can handle at least one amp which is a very typical diode I'll probably use a 1N4001 diode so to review we've determined that we need a transistor to be able to turn on the current for the coil on a relay that will activate the relay to enable a much larger current and this is an AC current we've determined the resistor value for the line between the AVR pin and the base of the transistor we've also determined that our transistor is the correct transistor, transistor to use it has a high enough HFE value and the the amps rating the maximum amp rating between the collector and emitter has a maximum value much higher than what the the circuit will produce let's go ahead and connect this to the breadboard and test our circuit I'm going to attach the relay to the end of the breadboard and it'll, one pin will be on this side and the other pin will be on the other side so I'm using these two end tie strips where I have the LED I don't need any more because this is actually where the the line to the output pin is going and I'm going to take out the existing resistor that I have that was provided for the LED I'm going to replace this resistor with the one that I need for the transistor and this is going to go to the this is from the the pin to the resistor one end of the resistor and then it's going to go to the base the base lead of the transistor and that would be in the middle so the other end of the resistor is to the the center lead of the transistor which is the base this is the base this is the emitter and this is the collector and the emitter actually no this is the other way around um, on the paper it had the emitter on the right hand side but because I have the resistor or the transistor turned around the flat side was on the on the paper uh, this is actually the emitter and this is the collector so I'm going to take the emitter and take that to ground okay now I have the the emitter lead going to ground this is not working very well that's better all right now I'm going to add the diode the protection diode which goes from one side of the relay to the other 
And I'll just go ahead and put one side, the the side with the line on the relay goes to the plus rail on this side. And it also goes to one of the coil sides. So I'm gonna put it right, right here. This, this is not really that stable, but it'll be good enough for us to test. Okay, so this side of the the diode, which has the line on it, is going to the plus side, and it's also going to one of the sides of the, the relay. The other side needs to go on the other side of the relay, and it'll go to the the collector of the of the um, transistor. So let me go ahead and wire that one to the collector. See if I've got that one long enough. Yeah, this will work. All right, and then. This side also goes to another side of the relay. I'm going to take the relay off for a moment. So this side goes to the other relay side. Okay, I'll plug the relay back in. Okay, so the circuit is plugged in and everything seems to be working correctly. We have the transistor and the relay plugged in. I'm going to test the 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 relay to see if it um, it's actually clicked on because when I plugged it in, it actually did engage. So I know that the uh, relay is on. So we're going to go ahead and um, go up to 10 inches of mercury and see if it turns off. And it worked. So when it reached 10 inches of mercury, I heard the click from the relay. And when it got down to about six or five inches of mercury, it clicked back on. So uh, the circuit is working correctly. Uh, next step is to solder this onto a perf board so it's stable enough to use on the on the machine. Thank you for watching. If you are following along with these experiments or producing successful projects on your own, helped by these tutorials, please let me know using the Contact Us page on the NewbieHack.com website. I would like to feature these on the website to benefit and motivate others to join this creative field. Thank you.